100 Words or Less, the podcast is part of the Punk News Podcast Network. Visit punknews.org for further information and all of the latest and greatest with all your favorite bands. Check it out. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of 100 Words or Less, the podcast. I'm your host, Ray Harkins, and we have reached episode number 12, Kicking Ass. We're going to be in like the 25s pretty soon. And I think you're supposed to do something special when you hit that sort of mark, so I'm not sure. The thing with podcasts is that I've noticed a lot of people trying to do live shows and stuff like that, or live streaming events. I just don't think that would ever work for this. So anyways, um, my guest this week is Forrest Klein from Hello Goodbye, the brainchild slash vocalist, guitarist, and just all-around talented dude. So I'll tell you more about him in a minute. But um, first and foremost, follow us on Twitter at 100 Words Podcast. And you can also like us on Facebook. Just type in 100 Words or Less, the podcast, and you'll be able to find it pretty easily. And then email the show as well 100 Words Podcast at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, I've been having nice discussions with a few people who have uh, either you know, emailed me about their own personal podcast or what they liked about the show, what they didn't like about the show, what guests kicked ass, what sucked, all that type of stuff. So I'd love to interact with people. So yeah, go ahead and email the show or any of those other channels. Um, so I went to Warp Tour. And this was about, uh, I don't know, a few days ago. But by the time this episode airs, it'll be you know over a week ago. Um, it's always an interesting experience for me because usually I go for work and I use work in quotes because, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of networking to be done for my profession and, uh, you know, seeing managers and bands and all that type of stuff is always fun and enjoyable. It's just always such an interesting thing to watch this cultural phenomenon go on and see how the kids change from year to year, what styles make sense, not only musically but also what they wear as well when i say they i mean you know the kids that are attending because a lot of kids you know they use this as sort of the the one huge event that they get to do during the summer um obviously they take you know whatever family trips and what have you but this is kind of the thing where their parents drop them off and they get to kind of hang out on their own for the entire day um i mean i remember when i was you know 14 15 years old and i think my first warp tour was when i was 15 uh, so 1995 and uh, I thought it was incredible. I think, I want to say it was in San Bernardino. Um, and this is the year that like Deftones and Quicksand, even though those are the bands that I did not care about. <laughs> uh, you know, I cared about bands like you No know, Effects and all the, those type of bands. Um, I can't even really remember the bands that I was so excited to see, but I just remember sitting in the bleachers between the two main stages and being able to watch both of them from a distance. And it was awesome. Um, in any event, it, I always find it funny when I run across friends who are like, this is the first year I've ever been. And, you know, they've been involved in music for quite some time. And it's just such a culture shock where it's like, you know, they might be, you know, over the age of 25. And, you know, you're seeing 14, 15, 16 year old kids there that are just like, oh my gosh, like they look so much different than me. They are, you know, wearing sometimes ridiculous costumes, outfits, whatever the most outlandish thing to potentially get attention of usually the opposite sex let's be honest um or obviously if they are homosexual or lesbian they are trying to attract those people uh of the same sex but in any event it's just a bunch of hormones <laughs> tossed into usually an outdoor festival um and yeah so it's just always really interesting um i did enjoy myself this year partially because it was so close to my house it was like five minutes away um, which that just makes the whole thing that much easier. Um, but yeah, I did see some bands like, uh, make do and mend and title fight, uh, newfound glory drew a huge crowd, which was awesome. Um, it's great to see them be able to kind of reinvigorate their career where some people might've written them off a few years ago. Um, so yeah, I guess the, the whole point of my rant and rave is, um, we should be thankful that we have something like the warp tour. Um, it's such a great way for kids to, um, you know, run across not only obviously their favorite bands where it's like, you see the kids that the moment that the gates open, 
they run over to whatever main stage it is and just basically park themselves there. But there are obviously kids that just kind of wander around the entire day. Um, and that's why you see so many different tents and vendors and nonprofits and because it's such an amazing place to obviously hit kids when they're really trying to make up their minds about what it is they want to be into, what it is that they want to spend their time listening to and all that type of stuff. I mean, obviously it gets a little weird when you see all of these huge corporations like, uh, you know, Trojan and they were promoting project X, the movie, which is obviously exactly why they're doing that. I'm mentioning it on a podcast right now. Um, and so, yeah, you, you feel a little strange about that because obviously they're just threw a bunch of money at Warp Tour and is like, okay, yeah, sure, you can be there. Um, obviously, I know that they do have standards and they have said no to certain, you know, websites and vendors about selling there. But in any event, uh, it was a very interesting experience. And if you haven't been to Warp Tour, you should because it's really weird. And on that note... I wanted to introduce our guest, Forrest Klein, from the band Hello Goodbye. Um, I've known Forrest indirectly for a while. He's uh, very close friends with uh, a few of my really good friends. Um, And I've always watched his career in in music and been really fascinated at how he's been able to navigate all the craziness that's happened around the band from, you know, mainstream radio play to lawsuits with his old record label and all that type of stuff so uh, and above it all he's always been every time i've encountered him just always been super super nice super cool um and always seems relatively positive so uh, i thought it'd be a really interesting conversation and uh, i went over to his house in long beach and we sat down in his studio and hung out and this is exactly what happened hope you enjoy need to buy in order to feel like they're successful or whatever yeah i always had the fear of like i have to know how to do everything so that when i can't afford to pay someone to do it i can do it all myself like you know (laughs) that really was the the well partly yeah uh, i want to be able to record myself because i may not always be able to record with somebody right yeah i mean (laughs) that's yeah because you're like yeah i don't want to and especially if you obviously want to have the control of like Hey, I can demo as long as I want. Yeah, um, which I do. But <laughs> <laughs> do you think that uh, does that help or hinder you as far as like the uh, the idea of because you don't? I mean, you set up timelines in your own uh-huh. head, but because you have unlimited resources, does the freedom of time help or hinder? Yeah, I think it helps. Yeah, I mean, the only time, the only reason it hinders is because a lot of time passes, and maybe from a business sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sure. Creatively, I think it only helps. So I, I never, I never like stew on something so long that I feel like I broke it or something. Right. You know. <laughs> sure. Sure. I mean, I guess I have, but then I realize that like I can't stay. <laughs> right. Then you're like, okay, I can do something about this. Yeah, but it's <laughs> great to have all the freedom. Yeah, that's what I've, I've always found. Bands that have the ability to, you know, have the foresight to mm-hmm. do something like your studio, and you you call this the Phantom Toll Booth, mm-hmm. like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> to have the foresight to do something like this to. Yeah, just be able to, like you said, reinvest in not only like you know your band's career, but like your career as a musician. Because usually, mm-hmm. I mean, people want to do something. You know, they don't want to just do one thing. Like, yeah, they want to grow past that in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, unless you're first thing, which you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be capable of all of it. Right, right, right. Has there been anything in the past that you like on that same note where people have like completely misquoted you, where it's just been? Like, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's crazy the thing. Well, it's not so much that they misquote you, but they take, like you said, they, they take it completely out of context where you're like, now it just sounds stupid. Right. Like, I guess I said that, but it sounds completely wrong. <laughs> right, 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 right. And that's just being probably funny. Did you ever have, did you ever go through, like, uh, you know, I know a lot of acts that, like, sign to major labels and stuff go through, like, media training. Did you ever have to do no, any of that? God, no, I, maybe I wish I had, <laughs> but no. I just remember, like, uh, so the dudes in Seos and like you know when they got signed to like Capital mm-hmm. and like that was when Capital was like you know Coldplay like mm-hmm. insane so it's like them telling stories about 
how strange it was where it's like we know how to communicate about our band but yeah. i mean it makes sense when a band like kind of comes from nothing yeah where it's, well, like, it's a different world and i don't understand it yeah and i i guess we've been kind of lucky to where i haven't really been in that world we weren't on a major label ever right we were on drive through right and it was such a as much as that went bad such right a close personal kind of scenario where there was no one ever like telling us you can't do this you can't do that right you know, you, you have to interview like this. It was, it was we were always kind of on our own. Right. You didn't, no have, you didn't have your, <laughs> you didn't have your handlers. Yeah, no. Yeah, I never had an experience like that. And I, I hear about that. And I know that exists. Right. And then, like, now kind of thinking about doing other deals with, like, this label or that label, I'm, like, scared. I'm like, am I going to finally find out, like, what this is really like? <laughs> You're like, oh, once the door opens, it like, oh, my God, like, here's yeah. this world that I've heard about for so long. I've heard about this world. I don't right. want any part of it. <laughs> it's like... Be Alice in Wonderland, like you know, jumping through the rabbit hole, and yeah. being like, "Whoa, like, yeah. okay, this is this is where it is." Um, yeah, and it's always I, I enjoy this the ability to do this show as well because it's you know, there's people like yourself where it's like you know we've existed parallel to one another for mm -hmm. years, but then it's like you know you and I have never been able to like sit down and be like I don't know like mm -hmm. there's show relationships and there's obviously external relationships mm -hmm. where it's just like because I mean at a show it's like you can talk to the person for like five minutes before yeah something else happens you get pulled away from it yeah and so it's like it's fun to be able to be like you know i don't like where were you born i have no like mm -hmm. were you always like raised in southern california and, no okay. um my parents are real so i moved around a lot i was born in uh ashland oregon oh wow yeah that's where is that in location to that's like an hour north of the southern border oh okay i was driving in okay um, and i hadn't been back there until like three years ago finally we passed through on the tour and then uh -huh. We passed by it a bunch of times. We finally had the time to stop. And so I pulled in and drove through town and stuff and drove up to my house that I grew up in. Yeah. And that was cool. And then we got stuck on like a one way like mountain highway <laughs> and with a trailer we could, couldn't get out. <laughs> so but, it's a, it was a pretty rural town. Yeah. Well, pretty small. Yeah. I met one guy from there once when I was um, <laughs> in Huntington Beach at Jamba Juice. <laughs> there was this like tweaker dude with a. Uh, <laughs> A visor that said Ashland, Oregon on it, and I was like, "Dude, you guys from Ashland, Oregon?" Right? right. You're like, "How?" Yeah. That, that's funny that that like that town would even have like a visor. Yeah, yeah. They <laughs> apparently sell one in some kind of store, and he had like bleached, weird, like braided tips, and he was like kind of a you know a street dweller. Yeah, sure, sure. Like a twenty twenty year old like yeah. kind of kid living on the streets in sure. a backpack. And my friend, it was at the time when I was super into CeeLo. Oh yeah, Do you remember that time? Oh, of course. Okay. I, I think it ebbs and flows. Like yeah. I, I feel like it's getting a resurgence in a way. Yeah. And for and CeeLo for the Don't Warp Tour, and it's, it's all about CeeLo again. <laughs> it's true, yeah. And for our listeners who aren't familiar with CeeLo, CeeLo is a dice game. So and you can mm -hmm. look it up on Google. But yes. Yeah. So and it's usually played for money. It yes. I remember one year at like a hardcore fest I was at. It was I would say like two thousand. I distinctly remember where it was like, you know, you see patches of people in circles mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, looking over and you're like Dude, that's like a thousand dollar game. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. someone could get stabbed over that. Like, uh, but yeah. Anyway, so that's. So did you play CeeLo against this guy? No, no I didn't. I didn't. My friend did, and he took all his money, and this oh. was like already like a homeless guy, basically. That's terrible. Yeah, he yeah. was keeping his backpack in like the cabinet at Jamba Juice. Like they were nice enough to let him keep his stuff there. He's like, so I basically live here. Oh. Wow. He was like, I'm just gonna take the train back up to Oregon sometime, but then he lost all his money. I was like, dude, well, you're like, can I buy you a smoothie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hope Oregon's cool, man. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. That's so, the only guy I ever met that I that, that lived there, so I'm kind of glad I moved out of there because you could have right. You <laughs> could have been that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and then I moved to Palm Desert. Oh wow! And then most people I meet from there are kind of freaks too. They are. So <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of experience with. Uh, well, I mean, I I've, I've never been through Asheville, but um, yeah, with a lot of a uh, uh, meth meth places. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. The high desert is where well, there's not much to do, so you do meth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bored. What do I do? My recreational activity. I didn't realize it, but yeah, like in Palm Desert, like all my friends were doing drugs at younger ages than yeah people in a normal towns. And, right, you know, right. Desert dwellers. They're strange too. Right. That's what you. So you kind of traveled around like a like a military brat in a way. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, but how, I mean, because it, it's strange because I mean, usually realtors like focus on. You know, it's like, hey, I'm Southern Californian, but mm -hmm. your parents, like, did the real estate market kind of dry up there and started to... No, they just liked to try new things. They were like, I mean, they, they moved, they they were from California. Oh, okay. And then they moved up to Oregon because my dad wanted to build a cabin. So he built a cabin. He did that. He accomplished he, that. He did that. <laughs> yeah. And I lived there till I was seven. And we lived in this one house that had no 
power, no electricity. This is before I can remember. This right. That's what I'm told. Like, right. The place they built, I guess he didn't build that good because it had no electricity. <laughs> what a chump. Yeah. Um, so lived there until I was seven, and then they were like, oh, I'm going to go to the desert, like go to Palm Springs. Like, uh. And then they lived there until I was 12, and they were like, this is way too hot. Right. It sucks. We're going to go back to the beach. And then we ended up and moved around like Irvine, Huntington. Sure. All the Orange County. The Orange County places. area. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yeah, I have two older sisters. Okay. And uh, was that difficult on you moving around a lot? No. I mean, the the time when I left Oregon, when I was seven, that was kind of tough. Mm -hmm. You know, I had like a couple best friends, and I was super bummed. Did you, were you, did you distinctly remember being pissed at your parents? Like, you know, I, was, it, I wasn't pissed, but I was crying and I was sad. Yeah, but yeah, I wasn't yeah. like, this is your fault and I hate you. Yeah. Um, but it was tough. But then moving from Palm Desert wasn't so bad. Sure. Or whatever. Maybe because I'd done it before. Yeah. And then moving from Irvine, I was like, great, let's get out of here. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> and now I'm just fine. Yeah. It's good. I guess it, it helps you kind of travel and meet new people and stuff. Yeah. So it, it makes you comfortable with that sort of thing. Right, right. And it throws you into new new social situations that you know people that don't move mm -hmm. like wouldn't normally. I know. I talk to people who grew up in the same house like their whole life, and I'm just like, wow, I, I can't even imagine the concept. Right, right, right. Because even when I lived in the same city, like we would move like you know all over the place. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, if your parents are realtors, like they constantly know, like here's a great deal. How yeah. can we say no to this? Yeah. Did your Did your mom and dad like work as a team? Like were their faces? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don Colleen, uh, he's a. Your neighbors in real estate or something like that. Oh, that's a good tagline. <laughs> are they still realtors now, or are they retired? Or? Um, well, they're basically retired, but they still dabble. dabble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's one of those jobs that you kind of always have your hand I in. I know. It's great. It's a good job for that reason, I think. Totally, totally. You can kind of take it at your own pace, work a little bit, work a lot. Right, right, right. Um, and so once you kind of settled in, in Orange County, then that was sort of your... Do you view that as more your more formative years? I would yeah, imagine. I feel like wherever you went to high school, is yeah, kind of like where you grew up. Right. Sure. And I went to high school in Hudson. Okay. Cool. Um. And so during like when did you like you always strike me as a person just like you know from when I didn't know you and like kind of like when Hello Goodbye was you know beginning and everything mm -hmm. you always struck me like it, it's when you saying that your parents are realtors. Uh -huh. it, I've always for whatever reason I don't know why but I always imagine your parents just being like this uh, you know like. I don't know, like hippie-ish in a way, uh, where it's like they they were very creative. Not to say that well, realtors can't be creative, yeah. but just because you always seemed like you had such a very, uh, well, intentional or unintentional, you just had a very strong vision for kind of, you know, the way that you were going to be portrayed. And uh -huh. like, because, I mean, with a band name like Hello Goodbye, like you could have gone to so many different, like d people could have had so many different perceptions of you. Yeah. And it's changed over time. But yeah. anyways, so that, I just always expected your parents to be like, you know, like, bohemian in a way you know they weren't yeah uh, they they maybe are now i feel like they're letting their hippie show a little bit more in the later years sure sure now my dad's just all like cool dad like super sweet yeah yeah yeah. but they were you know serious serious business folk yeah yeah and well you now, gotta be when you're a realtor yeah. yeah yeah and they, they didn't like do much uh you know artistic stuff but now like i said sure they're mellowing out some on their like painting and Nice. My dad started out doing photography, so I guess that's creative. Oh, even that's totally creative. It's, yeah. a, it's an it's I mean, an art it's, form. Yeah, totally yeah, yeah. The um, <clears throat> and so with so kind of with that, like, did what was your first kind of exposure to music to begin with, and then kind of what was the exposure to like independent music, as it were? Uh, yeah, the first exposure to music was basically oldies radio. Okay. Uh, we'd like like driving school. Stuff yeah, like driving that. school. Yeah. We had, in Palm Desert, we had a golf cart, and oh. so my dad would drive me down to the bus stop in the golf cart. I think, the don't, don't they give that to you when you move <laughs> yeah, there? Yeah, it's I a think? standard issue. They're like, here's a pool, here's a golf cart, you're good. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> you don't play golf, doesn't matter. Here's a yeah. golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just listen to oldies radio, and I really liked it. Um, and then, like, I got, like, a Beach Boys tape from my parents and stuff like that. And then my first exposure to independent music was probably just stealing Just Our Cat from my sister. Oh, okay, yeah. I think Old, older like, older siblings are definitely a very good introduction. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she she hooked me up with all of it. She gave me the Vandals. Okay. I thought the Vandals sweating at the oldies live was super funny. Of course, <laughs> it's an incredible record. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a good, especially starting off with like a live record where it's like you can kind of feel the energy from it too. Where yeah. You're like, oh, it's funny, like yeah, a little edgy. Like, yeah. I'm into this. Yeah, I was totally into it. Yeah. And I got like no effects, white trash cheese and a bean. Okay. Funky Drublick. Basically, Blink, Vandals, and No Effects were like the first three things I got. Sure. And was first that... thing I bought was Weezer Grew Up. Great, that was like a year later. Okay. They, you know, first I stole. 
the, the, the seedlings were planted yeah. there. So like, did so you were probably like what like freshman in high school or like junior high? No, this was, was even earlier. This was yeah. This was when I was like twelve. Oh, nice. That's cool. This was when I was doing math. This eleven. Eleven was the, when I was doing math. Okay, <laughs> and then you quit math once you're twelve. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because it, it you find the entry points for people like you know it's like you're like oh yeah I'm a fat records kid or like yeah. I was an epitaph kid yeah. it's like it's just so it's so distinct and it's like I wonder I wonder what kids are going to reference mm -hmm. you know like now like mm -hmm. are they going to view themselves as like oh yeah I'm like a rise records kid yeah like, yeah fueled by kids that's yeah uh, fueled by, fueled by kids like yeah that's probably mm -hmm. true like that's definitely a label that obviously has that mm -hmm. you know atmosphere if you will. I was a blink kid I yeah I no that's fine mm -hmm. what, what was the first time you saw them like when was your? Uh, I never did. I mean, I did, but this was like way later when I wasn't yeah. really a blink kid. Before. Sure, sure. I saw them. Well, once you let let's be fair. Once you're a blink kid, you're kind of always a blink kid. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. But I was a blink fan <laughs> right. at that point. <laughs> okay, got it, got um, it. Um, I was work when I was working at drive through. Okay. Uh, they played in Long Beach. Oh yeah. Which is where I lived here. Sure. And I went and saw them there. Which is pretty cool. I don't think I saw any real people. Yeah. But that was the first arena show too, like big uh -huh. arena show I went to. I didn't really like it. Yeah. So what was it what was your first uh like did your older sister take you to like one of your first shows? No. Um she she hooked me up when I was twelve, but by the time I was going to shows, mm -hmm. uh she she was a couple years older. She she was already like off in college. So. Right. She's like, ah, I don't have time to take my little brother <laughs> yeah. to shows. Yeah. But she was up in Humboldt, which is getting, getting Got it. wild. Right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> doing what you do in Humble. Yeah. First show I tried to go to was Homegrown at Chain Reaction. Oh, okay. But me and my friends got there and it was sold out, and we'd already gotten dropped off, so we had to take a, we took a cab to the Block at Orange. Oh, okay. And killed some time there, and then sure. took the cab back and acted like we went to the show. I guess I don't know why we felt like we had to do that. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, because it's like you you had you went there, you were denied entry, but then yeah. you, you needed to be a part of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so did you, did you? So that was probably like what. 12, 13, like a little No, bit. that was when I was like probably 14. Got it, got trying it. Trying to go to that show. And did you, um, did you always have the inkling that you kind of wanted to, you know, once you started to get exposed to that and witness it, like, when, when did that sort of, yeah. I want to play. Uh-huh. I, you know, I wanted to play. I mean, I got a, once I, once I heard Blink, I guess, I wanted to get a guitar. Yeah. You know? But I never thought about being in a band or playing shows. Mm -hmm. Like, Joe, Marlon. Mm -hmm. He would talk about how he's like he would see like bands touring. He's like, "Wow, like I want to go on tour and like you know, right? Look at them, they're driving around in a van, like whatever." And I never even like thought of that concept. I was just like, "Here's a band, they're here. I don't know why." Like, right. I didn't even think about touring. That like, yeah. it's funny because that's true. Like I, I I remember my first exposure to like a tour mm -hmm. was like our, uh, the band Strife. Like mm -hmm. they put out this VHS tape of like an East Coast tour they did, and it was like even though it was like totally unglamorous, it was you know they're in a van and yeah. like. But then them driving town to town is like, that's how bands get there. Like, <laughs> yeah. it was just so revelatory. I, yeah. Yeah, because you're young. You don't think about that. Yeah, I never thought about it. So so I didn't think, like, oh, I want to go to, you know, be in band with tours and stuff. I was like, I want to write some songs. Uh -huh. I had that, you know, desire. Sure. And then only later, like, when we got signed, I was like, touring, huh? Yeah. What an idea. All right. <laughs> what a novel I'll, concept. I'll see what I think about it. Like, right, right, right. I'll, I'll dip my toe into this <laughs> pool. <laughs> And so you, uh, so yeah, you started to kind of craft music that way, just like out, out of the sheer desire where it's like, you know, were you, what type of stuff were you writing then? Was it just like totally, you know, like juvenile pop punk? Yeah. I would hope you would be writing. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I had a band called Hooray for Me and it was just like, not even four chords. Four chords will get you by. It was like, oh, we got two chords or three chords here. Right. And was that, was that in high school you put that together? Yeah, that was probably eighth grade is when I started like the first band. Okay, and that was called Hooray for Me? Yeah. That's actually not that bad of a band name. Yeah. Like, relatively speaking, because uh, I find a, a lot of people have been telling their stories, like, you know, their first band name, and I've joked about it on the, the show before, where it's like, you need to have a terrible band name for your first band. Yeah, Cause, like, I had some, but I moved on to worse ones, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you started up, and then, like, people would argue, it's like, dude, hello, goodbye, like, seriously? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Hooray for Me, so that was your actually like, your first foray into a band yeah and did you guys like play shows and stuff uh no not with Ray for me i think okay. we played the talent show that's good though yeah how was how was the uh the crowd's reaction to it well we covered carousel okay so but you were playing guitar i presume right yeah okay yeah so i mean we dug it we didn't win or anything okay <laughs> yeah, yeah i just it, anytime anybody has like a talent show uh story it's usually like even though you know like punkish music was mm -hmm. a little more i mean you know kids were kind of used to it it's like 
it was still scary for a lot of them as far oh, as like, it was very scary yeah yeah but luckily i wasn't singing that one right so <laughs> yeah that was that was less scary for sure you were, was, you were able to scary. shred in the corner yeah right? <laughs> have that killer lead yeah <laughs> Um, just focus on the guitar playing skills but it was nice yeah totally understandable um, and so like as you were going through high school like what you know what was your high school experience because obviously the typical quote unquote punk experience is like oh dude high school was fucking terrible like, yeah I was pushing the lockers or whatever yeah like, did, you, did you you know did you navigate the waters appropriately and had fun with it yeah you know I never felt like high school was ter- terrible I yeah. really liked it um, I got I well, you, pushed in any lockers you're but... a friendly enough guy like you, you seem you you strike me as the type of person where I reference as like a dabbler, where it's like uh-huh. you would be able to get along with a dude who played like on the football team. Yeah. And then you'd be able to get, you know, along with like the drama kids or whatever. Yeah. You know, like the quote unquote archetypes of like a high school. You uh-huh. know? Yeah, sure. I, I bounced around I and mean, uh-huh. we had like a, a circle, of, a small circle of like eight friends, you know, mm-hmm. it was a tight group. But then we were, all of us were kind of the kids that were kind of friends with all the, whether sure. it's like, yeah, like the ASB, like right. kids or the kids or whatever right you were so you were you were blacklisted yeah <laughs> like, don't don't, don't talk to pro- forrest <laughs> i was still probably the biggest loser in the group i probably got picked on more <laughs> but it was never it was never like uh never scarred me or anything right right this was an emotionally traumatizing thing just yeah. the usual high school ribbing that yeah you should be yeah um so did you do uh do you do sports or anything like that no i was yeah. totally totally not a sports guy at so all. you were uh, would you reference yourself as an indoor kid yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, were you, what were you doing indoors besides writing music? Uh, you know, I, I don't know what I don't know what people thought of me. I was weird in high school for sure. Uh-huh. Uh I basically every morning I would I had a bike and I lived close enough to school that I could hear the bell ring, and then wow. hop on my bike and make it there. Wow! But I would I would, I'd hop on the bike. I had a giant uh, tape deck in my basket that I had painted pink and then brown so it was kind of both i painted it for some reason <laughs> that's it why not yeah yeah and you gotta like, make it your own <laughs> yeah and i had like this bizarre mixtape that i listened to for like two years in there because it was like the only tape sure that had like vanga boys and like ace of bass and stuff oh, amazing so D- and you please tell me you obviously like didn't wear like headset or no headphones. no no, no. It was this, just this long... box of this course is, okay for the world to i hear. wanted to make sure yeah you got to share this yeah and at the time, I was like, dang, I'm just having a good time, like, rolling to school, and then looking back, I'm like, that was bizarre. Right. I mean, <laughs> if I would have seen that kid just on the side of the street, be like, what's he doing? Yeah. Yeah. And I had, like, tiny shorts on. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, so you, like, you were, you had no defined style. You were just, like, you were just kind of throwing yourself out there. Yeah. But you, it's, it sounds like you weren't self-conscious about it. You were just. No. <laughs> or maybe not self-aware maybe yeah yeah <laughs> maybe that's now a better I way realize well, well, how <laughs> self-conscious i should have been <laughs> yeah maybe maybe this was a little too bizarre <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so you were like you know were you into like nerdy stuff like video games or books or anything like that you know i was never into the really typical nerdy stuff like, mm-hmm. never got hard into video games um and i never got into comics oh. um, Never got into books. <laughs> <laughs> Never did that whole thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. This is called The Fan Told Us because it's one of my favorite books and it's sure. a children's book. Yeah, it is. It, it is a good children's book, yes. Yeah, one of the few that I've read. Right. Um, but I was into nerdy stuff like the internet and sure. coding okay. and making websites. Oh, that's and, right. Yeah, that's. I, I think I, I remember in you know, interviews you've done in the past, that seems kind of like... Yeah, you, that's my nerd stuff. Sure. And I mean, that because you, you handle a lot of the band stuff <clears throat> now within like, you know, like coding and like mm-hmm. you know doing that type of stuff like yeah. that, that's still fun for yeah, you no i won't be able to pay somebody to do it so i right. have to be able to do it myself so basically most of your professional life is stemmed out of fear that <laughs> yeah. or not not fear but self-preservation yeah where it's sure. like yeah I, I i know that someday someone won't do this for me so yeah. i need to do it but i mean but at the same time i mean i love i started doing it all of this in high school because that's what i love doing right and it is like therapeutic to do like coding is a weird thing for me because like it's I don't know, making a song, yep. sometimes you're like, this is, there is no answer, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I, maybe I can let this stew for a couple of days and come back to it, and there will be, you know, there's there's like some weird magic involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with coding, I'm like, I figured it out. Like, here's right. the answer. Solution, Easy, right. Done, solution. There is only one solution, and I got it. Like, right. There's not like many solutions, you know? Sure. So I like that. It's yeah. Nice. No, that's true, yeah, because that expresses a different side of your personality where it's just like, I need to have some sort of resolution in this. Yeah. Because, yeah, that, that's very true. Um, yeah, because a lot of people end up, you know, like, 
the I think the first like on screen movie wise like representation of like you know people like coding mm-hmm. was, uh, like social network like how mm-hmm. they were doing that you know like marathon coding session people don't understand that it's like that type of work causes you to be someplace else mentally like mm-hmm. you know in the quote unquote zone like mm-hmm. you know what athletes are and it's like no one would ever look at an athlete and be like oh yeah I could probably compare that to a dude sitting in front of a computer right no it, but it totally is yeah. they're just different like mental capacities yeah. And so were you, um, like, was that something that you're like, I-, I could make, like, a career out of this, or this was just something that you were like, I really think this is fun? Well, that was my first thought. That was what I was going to go to college for, was for, not coding, but basically... Computer science. Website. Or sure, and sure. Graphic design and stuff. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I was like, well, I guess it seems like my best bet. It seems like a reasonable thing, but but now I'm like, I... I too many people would fail at that. Like, yeah, yeah, Probably yeah. wouldn't have been that great. Well, a lot of people fail at music, too. I know, I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> but I did but that that was the one I wasn't banking on. It just worked out. So right. Like, <laughs> no, that's true, yeah. I, I, and that was a good thing, because graphic design probably wouldn't have done yeah. so good. <laughs> right. And that's what I find funny, like, here, you know, like, obviously, the uh, the origins of Hello Goodbye, like, the... So many people, I mean, especially in this day and age, where it's like, you know, bands start, bands start with a business plan. You know, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. I need management. I need booking mm-hmm. agent. Like, there are bands that obviously don't start like that. Yeah. But, you know, it just seems once a person can understand the concept of being like, I can make a living out of doing this independent music. Like, mm-hmm. I can make a living touring places like Chain Reaction across the country. Mm-hmm. I mean, a meager living, but like, yeah. I can make a living. Then that's obviously kind of when the shift happened. But it's like, you know, I mean, you, you never, like you said, you didn't have a desire to tour. Like, this yeah. just came. It's like the attention, because you, Hello Goodbye first got attention with, you know, just, like, putting your own your own shit out there, just being like, oh, this is, here, yeah, this is fun. Yeah, and that's always been my motto, and that's what's always weirded me out about bands that start that way. Like, I, I talk to bands, and they're like, yeah, so, like, you know, we just got together, like, last month, like, we got, like, a handful of songs, we got a manager and a lawyer, and, like, it's, like, this guy from this old band who's helping us out or whatever, and I'm like, why are you worried about all that? Like, yeah, just make some music and just see what happens. Mm-hmm. I mean, I... I'm sure they have some smart things going on that I right, right, that maybe right. I'm oversimplifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I feel like that's the way to do anything. Is like, oh, you want to open a bakery? Just start baking and and make it happen. Like, you don't need to like do this and this and this and this and get it all lined up. Right. Because it's just it's just too too big of a task. Like just step by step. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Set set the. That's what I've noticed a common thread where people telling their stories of obviously like starting bands where it's like you know you you set up the goals that are kind of like immediately in front of you where it's like yeah. I would like to record a demo, as yeah. opposed to like, I can't wait to write my third full length. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Because you you know you don't know where you're going to end up. And everyone in this industry is always shifting around. Yeah. Right. Like people in bands end up being managers. Yeah. Or booking agents, or then back into a band or whatever. Right. And so you don't know what you're going to do. You just kind of take each step and do the best thing you can. Right. Right. I think if you set your sights too far ahead, you just <laughs> won't make any sense you'd be the forest from the trees or whatever okay, yeah. whatever the saying is yeah um it's so like as as you were putting this stuff out like online like did you um you know were people aware like in high school it's just like oh forest is doing like this music stuff because that's essentially when mm-hmm. hello goodbye kind of, i mean the incarnation like the very beginnings of it kind of mm-hmm. happened right like was that your like sophomore junior senior year or is that yeah that was junior senior year okay and and yeah it was like we had like a nice circle of friends that basically was all of our shows were good because we had a circle of friends that came and no one else. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. Like, where, where did you first start to play out? I mean, like, good people would come, obviously. Your group of friends that would come see you. The best place was The Hub. Oh, yes, Carson. yes. It was free. And it was outdoor and it was really pretty. Yep. And I yeah. liked it a lot. Yes, that was a great place. Um, so we played there a lot. Mm-hmm. And then that's where we would come out. We played Chain Reaction a bunch. And, sure. Uh, and was this, was this still, uh, was this primarily still, like, you and like a few other people like this was a full form band uh yeah it it, it changed uh, the, the lineup changed a lot back then too right right the first show we ever played was coos and it was just me and a tape recorder that's amazing which didn't which was okay i guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> i would hit play on a tape recorder and then try to play along with it <laughs> interesting <laughs> yeah. interesting and then and I did had, you only do that for one show and you're like yeah this is boring <laughs> yeah i was like let's get real people that'll be good yeah 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 um, that'll be a little more powerful maybe yeah but i had a miniature golf contest in the middle of the set so that kind of broke things up i <laughs> definitely broke up yeah. the tape recorder problems right <laughs> oh, especially at a small cafe like who's where it's just like yeah. hey here's some fun stuff yeah and was it was that always kind of the uh the goal too because i mean obviously with you i mean with you first 
spreading the message of hello goodbye where it's like you know you i mean you yourself as a person like you know you're not threatening you're not going to get up there and be like mm-hmm. you know like tough guy hardcore band uh, yeah, yeah it's like yeah let's, let's fuck some shit up yeah so it's like did I you wish sh- i could be those guys yeah. get instant respect they're scary and they do <laughs> they full sleeve tats and <laughs> yeah. crazy stuff um so was that always kind of like the uh you know like uh, not, not the goal as far as like a marketing plan is concerned but you're just like i want to kind of bring fun to these shows in some way shape or form or did was that even like a conscious thought at all see I mean, mo- most things weren't right. um like because that first show you know, i wasn't thinking about like how i want to present the show yeah. i was like well i'm play a show and you know like why did you why did you book that show in the first place you're just like i want to get out there and do this well because who was it um uh, i think they were called up for grabs at the time okay um but then they changed their names to the story up oh yeah remember story i do remember that band. Yep. Okay. they were awesome yeah but they had a show, and so they were like, do you want to open? And I was like, oh, sure. got it. So, but I was like, all right, if I'm going to play a show, it's not going to be a normal show. Like, it can't be, obviously. I'm not a tape recorder. Yeah. I was like, I mean, let's just do some things to make it fun and interesting. Sure. But it wasn't it wasn't anything like a marketing idea, you know? Right, right, right. It was just like, here's this one thing. And I think that's kind of, it did kind of set the tone, maybe. You know? mm-hmm. Like, well, all right, we're going to ha- I'm going to make mixtapes and give them away and have like a miniature golf competition or whatever. Right. Just to break up and to detract from what I'm not doing, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I might be lacking in presentation, yeah. I will make up in, like, you know, a for effort everywhere else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in gimmicks. Like, I'm not going to dress up in costume, but here's these other things. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I kind of set a tone. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and then that, that kind of carried over into, you know, once you started to, you know, play shows more regularly and, like, obviously have a band and everything like mm-hmm. that. And, did you, and obviously, like, the, it's always been your brainchild you've always been the, the the guiding voice behind it all and obviously like you said it was a rotating cast of characters mm-hmm. at the beginning um you know when when was the the switch flipped that you know that that stuff started to like you know you, you graduated high school and like mm-hmm. by the time that happened had stuff already like really started to click with hello goodbye just from like a business perspective where people were paying mm-hmm. attention no okay. um this guy graduated high school and then my i was started going to community college okay and I was just kind of, you know, I wasn't that into it. Right, just kind of <laughs> drifting. Yeah, just kind of drifting. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you know, I just want to play music. And it wasn't like it was doing well or anything. Right. I was just like, I just, all I want to do is play music. So. Yeah, you're like, this is this is what I want to do. Yeah, like when I'm in class, like I don't care. <laughs> right, and, right. And so my parents were like, all right, well, if you're not going to go to school, like you can't live here and we can't support you and whatever. Ah, and I was the, like, the tough love scenario. Yeah, yeah, I was like, reasonable. Got it. Okay. So then I moved into... Uh, a rehearsal space, uh, Gemini Studios. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I illegally lived there. I was about to say, oh, so you, like, literally moved in there. Yeah, I lived there for a year, or nine months, I guess. Amazing. With no shower. Why Why not? Yeah. They don't need it. And things, you know, I mean, they weren't doing anything crazy. We were just, uh, like, we'd go play in Arizona. Right. For no money, and then drive back. Like, sure. We hadn't gone on tour or anything. Right. The, the switch flipped then when we got signed to Drive Through, basically. Sure. Because then it was like, okay, this is a real thing, like, we're gonna get a band. Right. People people are investing in me. Like yeah. we need to, you know, not take this more seriously, but like there's there's a reason for us to get out there. Yeah. Um, were you so you, during that time you were just kinda like before drive through and everything, you were kinda just like working odd jobs and stuff like that? Oh uh, yeah, I was delivering pizza. Oh amazing. Nice. Good. One and, of those jobs. Yeah. It was you, fun. Really fun. You meet new people all the time. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever walk into a you know a porn shooter? No, <laughs> I walked into it. I have one story. Like I love Because <laughs> usually that's what you hear the story of, uh, you know, a pizza boy delivering yeah. some, you know. I, I got one porno shoot story. I, <laughs> please, please do tell. Um, it was 4th of July, and I delivered pizza to this house. It had, like, a little gate you open, and then there's, like, the front door. Okay. So I go in, and I knock on the front door, and they're like, come over to the side window, and I came over to, the, like, the sliding glass door on the side. Sure. And there's a lady. She's like, in her late 50s. Okay. In basically, what is it, like a see through sheer sure. nighty. Nice. Like she's basically naked. It's right. like a little bit of, you know, <laughs> fat mesh right. draped over her. <laughs> right. And it was disgusting. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, hey, how much do I owe you? And I'm like, uh, oh, it's $21.98. And she's like, oh, let me get my husband. And he comes out and he's like, all right, like, give me some money. And she's like, she looks at me, she's like, 4th of July, anything goes. And I'm like, I guess, what? <laughs> Holy shit. Is that, a, is that like a saying? Can I have my, here's your, 
Can I have a change back? Okay. And then I just took off. And I don't know what they were maybe like, trying to get at. Because the husband yeah. was like, not weird enough. He was like, all right, here you go. Like, right. Come, like, this is a business this transaction. Is, yeah, no right. big deal. Right. This is normal. My right. wife here. This, this is normal. Yeah. She, she just basically orders a bunch of stuff for delivery boys to come. That yeah. maybe they might join into some sort of swinging party, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I left, they like called BJ's or did that, or did that again? That's incredible. Just trying every spot. That's I, I'm well, not like you would have obviously, you know, taken the extra steps to participate in that, yeah. but like, you're, you're Who would have? Like, I know somebody out there that would have, but it was weird. I can imagine, like, your mind just shuts down. You're just like, it's like a survival instinct kicks in. Yeah. I just need to get out of here. Like, yeah, this is uncomfortable. Yeah, there's no, there's no real social interaction there because you're just like, I don't know what kind of situation I'm in. Like, you act normal. You're like, it's twenty one ninety eight. Here you go. <laughs> right. Um. Thank you. Have a, have a, like, you just yeah. kind of spit out the same lines. Right. You I am a it. robot. Here yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you do not want to, you do not want me here anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, um, and so, yeah, then you, you mentioned that you were, I didn't know that you worked at drive through at one point. Yeah. So you were doing like graphic design and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I started, they had a really bad website. They did. Um, and it's, it's weird because drive through I always, I mean, like you referenced earlier, you know, for whatever, uh, you know, bad things that I look up, I went through the drive through which we'll get to later, but not mm-hmm. in depth, because uh-huh. anybody can read that online, obviously. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, drive through was really the, I mean, that was a culture, like, mm-hmm. from, like, the inception of it. It's like, I remember it was just such a, they hit the scene, you know, kind of both feet first or whatever, I don't know, mm-hmm. whatever the expression is. And, they hit the ground running? Yeah, there you go, thank you. Yeah. Um, and it was just so strange because it's like, you know, that, that takes a lot of effort to happen, but they yeah. didn't, they didn't do it on purpose. You know, it was just kind of like, yeah. Oh, here this is. Yeah. And so the, uh, yeah, their website was terrible though. Yeah. And so I saw that and I emailed them and I was like, uh, your website sucks and I want to build you a better one. Right. And they're like, all right, give it a shot. And so they gave me like 50 bucks or something to build them an entire website. <laughs> sure. Sure. And, they were and, like, this, and this was the, yeah, this was prior to obviously you like working with them professionally, like yeah. signing wise. Yeah. That was yeah, kind of yeah. how they got introduced to you. Yeah. And did you then do you uh, you, you slipped them um, some CDRs? No, like, see that's the thing. Yeah. I never I never would have thought they were interested because they made fun of me constantly right. for what I like to listen to. <laughs> well, what were you listening to? They were making fun of like anniversary. Right. They were like, "What is this keyboard bullshit?" And I'm like, "I don't know. I like it." At the time. <laughs> what is this keyboard bullshit? Yeah, they were constantly making fun of me for everything. Okay. So I was like, "They're not gonna like me." <laughs> You're like, "Why am I gonna present myself yeah, to yeah. them? This is more ammo." Yeah. Yeah. So I never did, and then I stopped working there, and then, like, probably a year or two later was when kind of things got rolling with the band, and then Charlie Adams, do you know who? Oh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. He passed along the music. Got it, got it, yeah. And so the Charlie but, Adams, for people who don't know, yes. is a guy who ran a local label called We The People. We The People, yeah. And who put out the Astoria record. Yep. And also Starting Line. Yep. sold it directly. Yep. Yeah, it was quite a... Legends. Yes, quite a, uh, a nice uh, incubation label, so yeah. to speak, where it's like, you know, he was able to usher bands through to bigger things. Yeah, I think he did a good job. Yeah, he did. I actually saw him not too long ago. But, uh, yeah, so the, uh, there, I mean, there's no bidding war or anything for you guys. It was basically no. just like, oh, drive who's interested, let's, let's do this. Yeah. Um, did you kind of feel the, like I was talking about, like referencing that culture that drive through built, like, you know, did you kind of like, witness it as far as like were they trying to really build that sort of familial yeah i mean they were and they talked about it you know mm-hmm. yeah fine it's family whatever like yeah, 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 yeah. i was not a drive through kid right you know I well yeah, you're a little bit i mean you were a little bit quote unquote older because what they were they were kind of picking up the 14 to 16 year old kids yeah initially yeah sure so i was like not you know obsessed with the label i just worked there right right and so then yeah signing to it they were like yeah, if we're family and i was like i guess like whatever <laughs> right 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 we're just a band. Like, right, right. <laughs> but I mean, we were a family in the sense that I was really close with them. Sure. And every band on the label was super nice and awesome. Right, right. Yeah, you didn't feel like you were the... It, even though, like, because I, I always viewed, like, once you guys put out, you know, the first EP on Drive Through and everything, and even though it made stylistic sense to the other bands that were on the label, mm-hmm. it's still... You guys were always kind of the odd band out in a way. Yeah, uh, well, Steel Train, I think, was definitely the odd band. That, out. okay, yeah, that was, like, even further we than maybe, you guys. Yeah, yeah, we yeah for right. sure, for sure. Yeah, because there was definitely a, still a connection in some way, shape, or form. We still felt, you. like, right. the odd band out, you know. There wasn't yeah. a lot of musical kinship. Right, exactly, exactly. And so it did, I mean, but that obviously didn't bother you, because, like you said, you weren't, you know, signed to this label to join this family or culture. Yeah. It just kind of indirectly happened. Yeah. 
Um, and so did, you know, when you signed to the label, like how did your, uh, how did your parents react? Like, you know, did, were they finally like, oh, okay, for it? Like maybe this thing that you quit school yeah, for. Was... They started coming around. Yeah. Um, when I really like, I guess when hearing your arm started happening was when they were like, oh, all right. <laughs> you're like, I see what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> did, uh, but it sounds like you had a really reasonable discussion with them. Like, was it a kind of a, a, a like a sit down thing where it's like, mom, dad, this is kind of what I want to do. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're very reasonable people. Yeah. And they, you know, yeah, they weren't like mad at that. They're sure. Like, yeah, I get it. You know, if that's what you want to do, like, good luck. But obviously. But here's the parameters yeah, 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 where yeah. you need to live under. Yeah. That's cool. Cause yeah, it's, it's, I always find that dichotomy of where, because they, people, quote unquote, real world people, you know, mm-hmm. normals, <laughs> that they, you know, when you mentioned the idea of touring, they're just like, and that, it's a whole different concept than what we're used to as yeah. far as touring, like getting a what band. What they think it might be. Right. It's yeah. like, you know, they, they think of Kiss and, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, stadiums and all that type of stuff. And yeah. it's like, no, that's not what touring is. Like, right. you know, we're playing to like 10 kids in, yeah. you know, New Hampshire or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so, and because of that, the parents' reaction is to immediately be like, oh, it's like you're making a terrible decision for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, did they actually say that to you? Like, yeah, I mean, they, they, I don't know if they said it those words. <laughs> sure, sure. But that was basically the gist. Like, hey, this is not a good idea for you. Right. You know, and I'm like, well, I know what I have to do. Sure. Did they, did they want you to uh, get into reality? Uh, no, they never talked about that. <laughs> yeah. Now I want to, and now they want me to. It's <laughs> 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 no. so do you, you, uh, do you pick up tips from them over the years where it's like, oh, this is like, they, they if you're, you know, doing real estate transactions it's like oh yeah they'll they will help me beyond belief oh yeah for yeah. sure yeah they're helpful to have around yeah <laughs> um and so yeah as as things obviously started to progress with uh hello goodbye like what was your uh like you said you didn't have any desire to tour mm-hmm. um because if, for people that have never toured like touring sucks a lot of the time mm-hmm. people don't understand that yeah and not having the dream of touring yeah. and then doing it Basically, it, it, right? arced, it arced like this for me. You, you can't see this at home. Yes, but, but <laughs> it started out, and I was like, "Cool!" Like we went on. I think our first tour was a maybe a two week tour with Motion City Soundtrack. Okay, and it was just the West Coast, mm-hmm. and Limbeck was on it. And I was okay. like, "This is the coolest thing ever." Like, of course, we're basically road tripping. Right. You know, like it's a little vacation in yeah, a way. All right. the dudes are super rad. We're like barbecuing in summer. Like this is great. Yeah. And so I was like, "This is pretty cool." You know, it's kind of tiring, whatever. Then you know, maybe. Six months later, when, when things started to get really back to back and touring was more crazy and it was in the winter and, you know, yeah, you were going here and there in other countries and getting really, really burnt out. Was, right. Like that, that was your reality was being away from home as opposed to being home and then traveling. As a, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was not like a little perk of travel. It was like <laughs> you were always out, you know, in the van. Right. Right. Um, and so that's when it kind of was like this touring sucks. Totally. Like, I kind of hated it for a little while. Yeah. Because uh, it's just so tiring. And after, when you, when you really just, when it really builds up, you're like, this is just exhaust, exhausting beyond belief. Totally. But then, what, what, was the, what was the longest stretch that, like during that, during the lowest point, the valley, yeah. like what was the longest stretch that you were out where it was just like, is there any distinct, because I, I'll share a story where it was like, I remember being out playing a show in like, uh, it was either like Montreal or Quebec City. And it was like, you know, it was like a hundred kids. It was a good show. Mm-hmm. But I just remember like being like, in the men's bathroom, like sitting on a toilet, like not going to the bathroom, but just being there and just like, like mm-hmm. literally crying. Just yeah. like, I could not be further from home right now. And yeah. I just, I just want to be there. Yeah. And you look around at your quick surroundings and you're just in the most disgusting bathroom <laughs> on the planet. And you're like, totally. You're just like, my life. I don't, yeah. It's like what, it, like it, it totally is that moment where it's like, you feel like you like lift up out of your body and you're looking at yourself. You're like, how, like, like you said, how did I get here? Yeah. Like, do you ever remember any of those like low oh, moments? There's, there's a lot of low points. There was like the biggest stretch was probably like nine months of straight touring brutal which yeah it gets tiring and there was a couple countries involved the worst time was when we were supposed to go to north korea oh my god and we had just been on tour for i think like a two-month tour and then a three-month tour after that and then north korea and like some other country japan and then north korea sure and we went to japan we were like all just exhausted and miserable sure and we're like cool we're going to korea next no we're not. Right. Like, this is retarded. Like, yeah. We don't want to go. And so we called we called the label and we're like, we're, we don't want to go. Like we just don't want yeah, to go. Yeah. We're going home. And they're like, you can't. We're like, but we are. So bye. <laughs> right, did. right, right. Because we were just all so burnt. Sure, sure. The other tough time was probably uh, the drive through tour. Okay. Uh, the Sound of Change tour uh-huh. with Steel Train and an Angle. 
and we were it was like a long tour uh -huh. and it was one of the first tours that they put together when all those bands got signed sure and it was like nobody was coming to shows yeah and it was in the winter right winter will make every tour worse for me <laughs> totally yeah, yeah, yeah. the factor you're, it is for you yeah yeah i'm a real wuss when it comes to weather yeah you're like i like my son that's why i live in southern california yeah right and when it gets cold i want to die right so no one's coming to shows there's probably like 10 kids at some of these shows uh -huh. there was like a million canadian dates like border crossing back and forth oh, like you know the biggest yeah. pain in the butt kind of tour right and then at that point we just came back from canada had to do an overnight drive from canada stop off at someone's house who we slept at the night before going into canada who their house was infested with bees we just crashed at like someone's house after the show right and we got there went to bed realized it was infested with bees and we you're like, like this, up in the morning you're like wait this wasn't like this when we got there. yeah yeah Oh my God. So anyway, we went. We dropped back by there to get like one guy who couldn't go. Right. Got back on the road at about five in the morning. We flipped the van. And right, right, that's right. I remember that accident. Yeah. yeah. And right before that, like we were all. This is again. Like everyone was just feeling like you know sure. things were crummy. Right. And so we're driving along, and the guy who was playing bass, Marcus, was like, you know what? I think that I want to go home and and uh, you know and not, not not be in the band. Not do this. Right. And not do this. And I was like, all right. I get that. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there too. I'm yeah. not going home, but I, like, I get that. I, I don't disagree with you. And then about 10 minutes later, he fell asleep and we flipped the van. So it was a weird like, yeah. way for it to happen. Right, right. But then after that, we uh, went home because we flipped the van. Of course. But then Stephanie made us go back out and buy a new van and meet up with the tour two of days course, later. Of course, of course. But and then he didn't leave the van. <laughs> Some kind of weird... Like epiphany. <laughs> yeah. My life could be over. I could be missing out on these other, you know two weeks worth of dates or yeah. whatever. But you do always get to those points where you're like, you feel pushed up against the wall and you're like, I need to just go home. Yeah. But it has happened a lot less lately now. Sure. Is it like, it, like it's arced up where I've kind of realized, I don't know, it takes a certain kind of person to tour, I think. It does. And it takes maybe a little bit of learning about touring. Mm -hmm. Like I just kind of had to learn how, what it was and how you can enjoy it. Right. And like maybe how to make it more comfortable for yourself. Yeah. Because like, I mean, now, now the band's at the point where it's like, you're, you know, you have your fan base and like, mm -hmm. you're good with that. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's, you know, I, I don't personally think it's like plateaued. It's, I mean, it's, I think it's reached a comfortable spot where it's like, you can do what you want, but not kill yourself. Yeah. Like all I would want is for it to just go. <laughs> yeah. And, and kind just of, ride off yeah, yeah. Because I enjoy what I do and I would just love, I would love for that straight line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. I guess, as long, yeah. As long as that straight line obviously doesn't take the, 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 the down plateau does always have an end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. If I can just have that endless plateau, that'd be fine. <laughs> You're like, just take, take me until I'm about 60. That, that, that's fine. I'll yeah, take I don't you. know if that exists in nature. <laughs> right. That's true. Right. Um, but the, uh, so yeah, like, I, you know, like you said, as everything was kind of, you know, hitting and then how it's ebbed and flowed and like where you're at now, where it's like you do, you do have the ability to kind of, you know, call your own shots more. And, yeah. Like, we're going to say no to that, even though, like, that might be beneficial from, like, A and B perspective. I just know, like, it'll make us crazy yeah, or whatever. from a human mentality right. standpoint, we should say no. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. I guess I've learned a lot of those lessons. Right, right. Which is good. I mean, I'm sure, like, like where you're at now, do you feel like it's, like, the most confident that you've ever been, like, you know, musically and kind of professionally? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Because everything that's ever happened, um, all this stuff that did happen, like, with the Ray Young stuff. Right. It was like, you. I had no idea what was going on. So I couldn't be confident because I was like, I, it was a whirlwind. Right. You know? And so with... Now you kind of feel like you, you know what you're doing. Right, right, right. And with the, uh, like, hitting on that whole, you know, like, radio perspective and everything, because it's like, you know, stuff was, like, that was on the first full length, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that the Hear Me Arms, like you were saying yeah. earlier. Like, what was the most bizarre situation? Because, I mean, you know, when you enter that world, you do things like you said that you're just like I. Why am I here? Yeah. I've never experienced this. Yeah. Like in any way, shape, or form. Like, what was the weirdest thing that you were presented at the time? Where it's just like, like you did it, but you're just like, this is so surreal. Uh, we played with LL Cool J. It's pretty surreal. Yeah. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't know what kind of fan. <laughs> right. Of LL Cool J and fan of Hello Goodbye. Like how it makes sense. Yeah. Was it's this just, just like a radio company. festival? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is hilarious. and then tons of weird interviews with like just you know. There was one time we went and kind of did like a circuit of interviews with like all of these like E and like oh, entertainment yeah. kind of things. Where sure. Like, this is not even like, you know. This, like this else. is, 
This is not independent culture. This is pop culture. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you play those shows, like I grew up, like like you said, probably like you did too, when uh, going to shows chain reaction. Of course. The first one I didn't get into because it was sold out. But right. Everything that I did, and all my music musical kind of experience, growing up until when I was like twenty two. Right. It was just these small shows. So then playing anything bigger was like, this is not something that I am necessarily even a fan of. Right. Or an experience that I know what it feels like to sure. be in the audience at a show like this. Like I don't know what it's like or what people want. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, how, do do I do what I do on the same stage? Yeah. I don't know. You know, because all I knew was like chain reaction shows. Basically. Right. Right. And, right. Right. And that's what made sense to me. Did you have to like gear yourself up mentally, like when you were stepping into these, you know, giant radio festivals, and be like, "All right, I need to be a bigger personality," or like, you know, you need to adapt yourself in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> you know, no. like not adapt yourself as like a person. I'm always just good at making myself just forget it <laughs> and say, yeah. "Oh, fuck it." Like, right. who I don't know what. Just to blank. I out. basically would go up there and play it like it was chain reaction. Right. You know, because I would just be like, I. I think, like, what are you supposed to do in this situation? I don't know, I guess, so I'm just going to whatever. Right. I don't know if anybody asked about this right <laughs> yeah. now. Like, who, yeah. no one, like, like, let me Google it. Right. I don't know. These are weird answers. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me grab LL Cool J for a sec. Yeah. Let me talk to him. How do you do this, dude? Oh, this you, take your, you take your shirt off? Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> it won't work for me. <laughs> You're like, I think I need to get some six-pack abs before I do anything else. Um, but, like, what, <clears throat> reflecting upon that time, like, what was, uh, you know, do you, do you feel, I mean, obviously it was beneficial from like, you know, a, there's just the band's perspective and probably like from a financial perspective as well, where it's like, you know, you were, because that, that record's gold now, mm -hmm. right? Which is, do you have a plaque for it? Mm, no, the last plaque I got was uh, a gold single. Oh, okay. Uh, but it was right before the single went platinum. So it's for like, it's a plaque for like 998000 which is kind of, I don't know why, I didn't order it. So I'm like, why did you choose this timing? To... <laughs> Shouldn't you wait till yeah. the next, you yeah. know? It'll be like a week, I think. Right. <laughs> but so, yeah, sitting over there. Yeah. And so, like, the, yeah, lo looking upon that time, like, do you, does it still just, like, not make sense to you? Where it was just, like... Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a completely different world, and it's a world that I don't understand. And it is, like, you kind of feel like, a machine like a thing that you get thrown into mm -hmm. you know at least that's how i kind of viewed it i was like i this is just you get thrown into a thing where gears are turning and you're like i'm no longer i'm just like on a belt you know right right yeah you're you're on a belt and you need to turn to the left do yeah. your thing there turn yeah. to the right do your thing yeah i never really thought about it from like that like i get the idea of being thrown into a machine but conveyor belt i think that's a very that's how it felt yeah and then you, know, you kind of hop off of that and that's why i feel more comfortable <laughs> walking on my own i guess <laughs> right and it's it's funny because, you know, since you've always been very, you know, do it yourself, like, I mean, that's obviously like people say that a lot, but they mm -hmm. don't know like where it kind of exists from within the punk culture. It's yeah. like, you know, I mean, you see like, you know, the DIY network on television and it's like, yeah. obviously like it's do it yourself home repair. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it doesn't have a connection to punk music, but yeah. like, you know, do you like obviously the DIY nature, like, you know, did that kind of just come like internally or did that, that was something that you like just because you saw like you know what blink was doing and like all these other bands and kind i think of, like, it's both parts yeah and i think the diy network is actually relevant too it, it, no i totally agree it comes from the same place like yeah for me i mean part of it is just that that's what i grew up seeing and that's what i understood you know? right and like i i see bands that play these little shows and this is how they live and right this is what i get right and then part of it is just i think something inside of you you're like i yeah i, I could go buy a product but I'd rather, like, make it myself, you know? Sure. It was just kind of that gratifying sense of it. Right. So that's kind of how everything is for me. Like, the reason I like coding, like, you can go online, you can Google, like, I want this kind of script, you know? Right. And I could just download that and then pop it up and it would work. But I'm like, I just, I hate, for whatever reason, I guess it's, like, kind of an OCD or a control freak kind of thing. Sure, sure. But I'm like, I hate this script that someone else made. Like, I need to, like, maybe look at it, figure out what's going on. Right. And then make it from scratch. Right. And then, yeah, change these things in order to make it your own. Yeah, way. yeah. Right. That put, put your fingerprint on it, and then that way it'll make it. And that's the only way I feel comfortable with most things. Right. It's that, because you also, I mean, you, you're... For what I view you as is like you're, you're definitely a crafty guy. Where it's like you know you do like you know you like you mentioned photography. It's like mm -hmm. you know, you're into photography now, and you do well not now. Like I'm sure it's always been kind of a passion of yeah. yours in some way, but you haven't been able to you know have the time to exploit it, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, does it does it kind of feel like what creative 
juice does that flow? Is it kind of the the you know the OCDness where it's like I can control the shot and mm -hmm. I can make this aperture look like this? And mm -hmm. Like you know what 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 does it tickle inside of you that like I like this? Well, it's a lot of things. I mean, it's the technical aspect. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm kind of a technical guy, so I, I like you know sure the apertures, and the, <laughs> the, the lenses, yeah, the yeah, lenses yeah. and the accessories. <laughs> sure. Um, but I mean, for me, I think it's just a sense of just wanting to make something and then right. having it be like. You know, I took a picture and then there it is, and you right. know, I have it. Here's it a phys physical manifestation yeah. of this. Yeah. This didn't exist before. Right, right. Um, and then kind of flipping back to. Uh, and I have a terrible memory, so photos are great for me because I'm like, oh man, I totally don't remember that trip. <laughs> Look at all these memories now. <laughs> That's funny. Um, like I, like we were mentioning earlier, obviously, like Hello Goodbye went through. You know, it was like a year and a half that you were embroiled in the lawsuits mm -hmm. and suing and counter suing with drive through and stuff like that. You know, that first of all, it's a long period of time to go through that. And that sucks. Um, how did you kind of, you know, how'd you keep your head up during that? I don't know. Because um, that, that, I mean that for all intent and purposes, like a lot of other bands that would go through that, like mm -hmm. that would break, that would break their back, especially yeah. from your perspective where it's like, you know, this was all falling on you. Like you mm -hmm. were the, contracting party it yeah. wasn't like you know you and four other dudes that was like all right we can collectively put our heads together and commiserate it's like it's like you and your manager you're yeah. like all right like let's roll our sleeves up and see what crap we gotta deal with today i i don't know um it was hairy and it seemed like there may never be an end um mm -hmm. but i i think you just always kind of have to keep your head up uh, yeah or at least i do like i i, I never get down for too long yeah you yeah. are a pretty yeah. positive person it'll I know that, I mean, I, I get dark. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I get depressed, but by the next morning, I'm like, whatever, like, that's the situation. Sure. And let's make the best of it. So you're able to, you're, you as a person, you're able to take whatever, you know, like you'd be in a dark place for a day or whatever, mm -hmm. but then you'd be able to kind of take that and be like, you know, a new day dawns or whatever and like be able to move yeah. past it in a way. Yeah, I mean, you do what you can do. I guess you just, yeah, you do what you can do within your power and everything else. You're like, well. Right. If this kills me, I guess that's that's what it is. I don't know. <laughs> right, right. What can I do about it? As as evidenced by the last record that you put out. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> the record title. Um, yeah, because I was just, it, like, a, as I was watching from the sideline, like, that kind of stuff all transpires. Just, like, you know, it sucks because it's, like, at the end of the day, it's, like, you, yourself, you're just, like, I just want to be a creative person. I would mm -hmm. like to create music. And, like, yeah. it's, like, obviously the business got in the way of that. Mm -hmm. And it just made, like, during that time, were you just kind of like, were you less inspired to write during that time? Or was it like, did it give you even more fuel to be like, I can pour all of this negative energy into a song that's, you know, I might be able to... You know, I tuned it all out. So it didn't pour... It, there's not really a whole lot of energy about that situation in the record. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about other things. Right, right, right. Because as much as that ruined my life, sure. or whatever, I, it didn't really kind of affect my emotions Art. so much, you know? Interesting. So, so it's not really in the record, but it did. It did give me the freedom. I was like, basically, it gave me the. It gave me the time. I knew. I was like, thinking positively. I'm like, all right, you know, give it a year, give it a two. Like, but I'm gonna be through this, right? Like, one right. way or another. Like, yeah, this whether, will. This won't stretch on forever. Yeah, yeah this although won't, it feels like it. <laughs> yeah, this won't stretch on forever. And as bad as it gets, like, the worst that'll happen is I'm just gonna have to put this record out for free, and maybe they'll sue me, and, and it's gonna, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So just knowing that, I was like, well, now I'm just going to take my time and write songs. Right, right, right. And do, when did that, because uh, you've been married now for how long? Uh, two years. Okay. And like, did that, uh, like, you know, was, cause did you get married during that kind of time when that was all happening? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you were able to kind of like put your energy into the fact. Yeah, that, like, there something... was other stuff going on. Right. That was the biggest business thing, the biggest, biggest legal thing, and the biggest, you know, money thing. Sure. But yeah, there was a lot of stuff, other stuff going on in my life. Got engaged and then married during that time. Right. Grew up a lot. Sure. And so you were able to kind of, uh, yeah, put your energies, like, yeah, you were able to tune that out because you're just like, I do have these positive things. Yeah. Here, where it's like, I'm not bogged down by all the negativeness of, yeah. <laughs> of a really fun lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so now, now that you're sitting where you're at, um, and like I said, you kind of, you know, you're more in control about, you know, what you're able to do, not only musically, but like professionally as well. And then being able, you know, settling down more, so to speak, like, um, you know, how does that all kind of relate in your own head where it's just like, you know, did, did you think that you would be here? Like, did you always have this desire? Like, I need to be married by this time. And like, kind of have this like sort of timeline. Cause I mean, everybody has like a, 
mm -hmm. a rough like oh i think i'll be doing this by this age <laughs> you know no you know what that's maybe my fault is that i've never had <laughs> you're not much of a planner no i'm not <laughs> I mean, I've got hopes, but uh, but no, I never thought of like, oh, I'm gonna get married by this time. Like, right. Who who knew? I you know, I didn't know that I'd be married now. Right. And I how don't think my wife knew that she'd be married now. <laughs> right. How did you guys meet? Uh, me and mutual friends in high school. We met a long time ago. Yeah. Um, she didn't go to our school, but she went to nearby school, and so sure. she was friends with my friends, and I think a couple times we just like hung out together in groups. Right. But then. So I knew who she was. Yeah, she existed. In she ecosystem. existed in the ecosystem. And like, but you know, a year or two passed before we really started kind of hanging out. Right, right. And I'm sure it was always strange for you because I mean, you don't like because of your positive nature and niceness. Like, you know, I mean, because obviously guys and bands definitely have a stereotype in regards to how they are to women. Right? Uh huh. Where it's like you know, the different town, different city each night. It's <laughs> like you know, here whatever whatever this girl is, you know, sleep, make out, with whatever. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like you never struck me as that type of person, and yeah. you weren't uh, indulging in that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure because you were so like widely exposed as like you know, I could forest for hello goodbye. Like was that was that a weird thing for you to kind of relate in your mind, where it's just like like you know, I don't know, you, you, obviously a person would be arrogant if they're viewing themselves as a sex symbol in some way, shape, or form. But, you know, was that always just, like, super strange for you to be like, like, how am I going to find a decent girl out of all this chaos? Like, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I was lucky enough that me and Chelsea started dating seriously before we really went on tour for the first time ever. Oh, okay. So it wasn't it wasn't like that. I never had to, I had to worry about that. Sure, sure. By the time we went on tour, I was like, done like, right you're like locked down all good yeah no worries <laughs> you're like i don't need to meet any of these girls at these shows because it's not going to be good i'm sure of course of course if, if it's if our relationship is starting off with hello goodbye is my favorite band this is probably <laughs> not going to be good thing. yeah and i've seen too many people meet girls at shows and there's nice girls at shows of course yeah it's not but the relationships don't don't go well <laughs> no no yeah that, it's starting off from a place of like uh yeah adulation that yeah is can sometimes be very uh inorganic yeah, two of the handsome guys are um, married to fan club, the fan, girls who ran their fan club. Really? That's uh, handsome fans are definitely like next level. It doesn't get any more adulation based than no. that. You ran the fan club. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you you probably have tattoos inspired by handsome in some yeah. shape or form. Yeah, like not only just one but multiple. Probably. <laughs> that would weird me out. And so, um, yeah, looking forward, like what uh, you know, positive, like you said, you know, you're kind of crafting new music as you speak and like do you did you ever have a desire to do like you know your own quote-unquote solo stuff i mean this all is that's and yeah. it always has been and that's sure. it's sort of a thought you know that i've had my parents are at that's the thing my parents are asking me now they're like when are you just gonna start calling for a song right i was like that's weird i don't know why would yeah I? like what's the point sure sure because yeah for me it was like i started this under this name that's a pretty fine name it is um just doing whatever it was that i wanted to do and i feel like I mean, I feel like I have freedom to do whatever I want to do. I don't right. have any need for like this other avenue sure. of you know expression because I can pull it all into this. Sure, sure. Uh, I don't know if that's sometimes I worry that that's not the best like maybe experience for people. Right. You know, if they sure. if they hear this music like I don't get it, like what's he doing? Right. You know, I don't know if that's what people think or if it's the best business thing. I'm like maybe you'd be better off to change your name. Sure. Who knows? Or maybe. <laughs> But personally, at least as far as like expression, I don't feel like there's any limitation to that. That's um, yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, obviously, that's evidence from like or evident from the last record, where it's like you know, they're, for lack of a better term, like it was a more serious tone, but it mm -hmm. still retained like the fun vibe that mm -hmm. obviously you've always put out. But you know, people are like, where's the keyboards? Like, where's <laughs> where, where's that type of stuff? Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's like as so many people have these ideas of like this is the way that the band needs to be mm -hmm. forever. Yeah, like, I, I want to in your arms again. Yeah, and again, mm -hmm. and again. Mm -hmm. Like, but then it's like you know, as those, as those, and people, that's the downside of the battle that, like, you know, kind of we face. Sure. Like, do you, yeah. I mean, because you at this point, it's like in your life, you there's no desire to recreate what you did when you were seventeen or eighteen. Yeah. Like that's not. Why would anyone? Right. I mean, well, some people would do it just because uh, it's a business move, like you were right. saying. <laughs> but I don't think it would, the thing is, I'm like, I don't even think that would be a good business move. It's true, yeah. Because Definitely. it would probably, yeah, it would probably fall flat in its face because yeah. you would be trying too hard. Yeah. And right. I've seen that so many times. People who are really banging their head against the wall trying to do whatever it takes. And I'm like, 
it's just not working. And now you're just banging your head against the wall. Like, why yeah. are you doing that? Now you're hurting yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally banging their heads against the wall. Sure, sure. It's like, literally, like, you don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> um, so, yeah, looking forward now that you kind of, you, you basically have a blank slate to do whatever you want in regards to, like you were saying, musically, but then, like, also business-wise as well. It's mm-hmm. like, um, mm-hmm. you know, so is it just, it's pretty much just like, as it kind of comes, you feel like, you're like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll do this, we'll do that, and we'll yeah. kind of see what, uh, what makes the most sense for us business-wise and, like, you know, touring and all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, you can just kind of take each thing. We've done lots of weird things and mm-hmm. things that maybe wouldn't make sense on paper, but sure. it seems right to us, you know? Sure, sure. Like, what what wouldn't make sense on paper that you guys would like? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, a lot of the tours we've done have been with bands that don't, aren't, you know, maybe exactly like us, but have them do that. Like, right. Like, we... Glory or you know, Good Hanson or whatever. Right, right, right. But at the time, it seemed like a good decision. Yeah. Like, we can play in front of a new crowd. And yeah. That's always nice. Yeah. You won't go crazy that way. It's a different <laughs> touring experience. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much for hanging out and BSing about this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed it in some way, shape, or form. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay.